I've heard countless stories of people wearing masks below the noses, wearing birth control rings as bracelets, even listing oxygen as an allergy. These easily avoidable mistakes bring out the faults in the healthcare system and the way that we educate the public. How many people have been confused by something they've heard their doctor say or have walked out of their doctor's office completely clueless? In my experience working at a hospital in India, I notice a huge difference between management of illness and success of treatment, even with the same level of treatment plan offered and doctor competency. While conducting research on tuberculosis awareness, I found that the government of India pioneered many containment strategies, but they failed to tailor these strategies to the varying health awareness of the public. The success to a healthy world is the health empowerment of its end users. Both the doctor and the patient must work together to achieve a common goal, that is, the health literacy of the public. The doctor needs to empower the patient and provide them the information to safeguard their own health, and the patient needs to understand and put in the effort to follow guidelines set by the healthcare professional. A study in Netherlands recently found that low health literacy translated into less involvement in medical decision making for people of all race, gender, and income. As a medical student myself, I have seen firsthand how people of all demographics struggle to make decisions regarding their treatment and care simply because they are unable to understand what their doctor has said to them. This confusion and inability to understand information required for decision making points out the problems we still face in healthcare literacy. As recently as 40 years ago, tuberculosis was a huge threat in England and was one of the primary causes of death for hundreds of years. And yet, a once enormous public health threat was brought under control. And to do that, they started at the core of the problem, that is, public health awareness. Steve Jobs once said, You have to start with the customer experience and work backwards towards the technology, not the other way around. In this case, the customer, that is the patient, must be at the core of their strategy. A lot of interest in funding goes to medical research, which is very important. But the knowledge is futile when the implementation does not address the biggest variable, which is human participation. It has its own socio-economic, religious, cultural, and geographical differences, and this is what makes human participation such a difficult problem to tackle. Now let's look at each of these a little bit more closely. How do we turn the ocean of unknown into familiar facts of disease? Well, there are three steps. Firstly, we need to understand the health literacy level of the public. What are the specific areas we need to target? Secondly, we need to partner and engage with the public to turn illness into wellness. Finally, we need to set clearly defined endpoints back with scientific data and periodic appraisal to test the effectiveness. So how do we understand the health literacy level of the public? Information spread is more powerful when presented in a manner that is more relatable to its audience. For example, social distancing in the time of a disease outbreak is, is a privilege for some people. Some people simply cannot afford to maintain distance in their living quarters. Hence, the idea of a social bubble with isolation of each individual bubble and continued use of masks makes more sense and is more likely to be followed. We need to keep it simple. Trying to teach people about particulate sized matter and viral strains is not going to work for everyone. We need to make it engaging for the audience, use pictorial representations to leave a long-lasting impression and appeal to them. Moving on to the second step, how do we engage and partner with the public? Incentivization not only for people to take better care of themselves, but for patients, uh, for doctors and healthcare professionals to manage patient pool better is an effective strategy. In kindergarten, getting a gold star for a job well done works, motivates children to work harder and do better. At the same time, we use disincentivization for less than ideal uh, compliance with actions. For example, sugar tax and tobacco tax, where companies were taxed based on their, their tobacco and sugar content in order to combat lifestyle diseases, was an effective strategy. How information is presented to the public has a huge impact on how information is received. Public health goals are more likely to be followed when they engage with the public and the presented data inspires the, the public to participate. Control the context and you control the mind. Control the mind and you control reality. A remarkable example of this is how India beat polio. Viral misinformation, pardon the pun, has historically traveled faster than vaccines in India. The history of vaccination in India offers some important lessons. While polio eradication was a success story, it has not been without challenges. India witnessed some serious resistance to vaccination, and yet it was a success not only because they understood the fears and apprehensions of the public, but because they took the vaccine doorstep to doorstep, thereby overcoming the hurdle of the hurdle of healthcare accessibility. Research funding and policies in medical sciences are incomplete without understanding and addressing the public's fears and apprehensions and building the confidence of the public. 
Healthcare is not only a right of the citizens of the world, but a duty, as they are equal participants in their own health. There are many tools we can use to improve health literacy, and some of the best ones are the most simple. Ask questions and advocate for each other. Interrupt when you need more information and take control of your own health. Your body is your most priceless possession. Make sure you know how you're caring for it. Thank you.